Frequencies on the card. Tackens are on it's the a card. room continuously occupied by the dedicated airmen of the 9th Special Operations Squadron, part of the 27th Special Operations Wing, which calls Cannon Air Force Base home. It's the western base of the Air Commando. For us, specifically with the M2J, it's, it's the home. It's the mothership. It's the largest M2J so squadron. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Roy is the operations officer of the 9th SOS, which flies the MC-130J Commando cargo plane on a variety of missions around the world and planning for those flights. Heads up, heads down will be between pilots. Happens right here. We fly a lot, we train a lot. So our folks are flying one to two times a week, uh, which is a pretty big venture, uh, although it may not sound like it. And now they get to show us as we tag along for an unclassified flight in the light of day, a rarity for the ninth sauce. Our security is, is paramount to not just our safety, but the safety of the folks that we're working with and the success of the operations. So we're not hiding any things. We want to ensure that we have the opportunity to go out there and succeed uh, with the least risk possible. Flying at night is one of those ways that we do that. I mean, we can infill, exfil, and austere locations uh, blacked out at night. Captain Alicia LaPrant is the aircraft commander. There's different people on the plane who uh, they are their subject matter expert in their specific job. And so trying to manage everybody's opinions and their knowledge and put it together and make the best decision possible. Decisions and scenarios that have them flying high or low, moving people or cargo in a friendly or hostile territory, refueling or being refueled. And keeping an eye on just about everything is the combat systems officer. I'm using the other systems on board to make sure that we're staying safe, as well as, again, making sure the fuels are still looking good. Uh, looking at airdrops, conducting those, getting those done, and then uh, I'm also in charge of the defense systems. As for those airdrops, Captain Sean Reagan is in communication with the loadmaster, who's the one responsible for anything in the back of the plane. Anything coming onto the plane, anything coming off on the plane, including people. Senior Airman Delani Horton runs the numbers on that cargo. This right here is just a training bundle. It's only 840 pounds. Uh, usually they can be up to 2,300 pounds. And is the one to throw it out. Five seconds, I grab my J knife, I hold it up against there, and then I just sit and I wait until I hear green light, and then the red light turns into a green light. As soon as that comes on, I cut the gate. This goes shooting out. It's definitely a lot of uh, pressure, but granted, everything we do is pretty big and we know we train for it. That training happens in the skies around the region, maybe even some practice landings in Lubbock. The New Mexico, Texas, Colorado regions uh, and the Melrose Range provide us significant training opportunities that allow us to continue to move forward, uh, develop our proficiency, be prepared for combat or crisis. Crises in Haiti, Fukushima or stateside after Hurricane Katrina and for Captain Reagan, a deployment to Afghanistan. Pretty fulfilling, at least for me, just to kind of put all that training and schooling to work to, you know, have an impact on, on someone that's uh, in danger or needs those supplies on the ground. Airman Horton says he's dropped everything from drinks to building material. Most importantly, he's helped rescue an endangered army platoon. Seeing those guys' faces as they boarded the aircraft, it was really, uh, made me feel really like proud. A pride the 9th SOS hopes you feel as they fly overhead. Rest assured that the professional women and men of the 9th Special Operations Squadron, the 27th Special Operations Wing, are doing what they need to do to go get the mission done on behalf of our nation.